Hi everyone, we're just going to give folks a few minutes so that they can log on. Jan Lamberg says hello from Western Massachusetts. Hi, Jan. Okay, so as everyone's joining in, I'll just go ahead and get started with our little intro. Welcome back to bird drawing classes with John Muir Laws, or welcome for the first time if you didn't happen to catch our first series. This series will be recorded and um, it'll be available live on Facebook right after the session and we'll also upload it to the Audubon California YouTube. Um, and just one more reminder that we are producing these for free. So if you can, we'll go ahead and drop some links in the chat for our uh, donation pages for John and for Audubon and also the link to John's book. Um, one other thing for this class is that we will be using a worksheet and you don't have to have it printed out and John will reference it on the screen, but it'll be convenient for you to have. So we'll go ahead and post that in the chat as well and you'll be able to access the PDF. So without further ado, I'll hand it over to John. Hey, everybody, and welcome to this, uh, the first in the series of three new workshops with the National Audubon Society about how to draw birds. If you have printed out the Masked Shrike Worksheet, oh, by the way, just for your safety, all the birds in this workshop are masked, right? So in accordance with, with, with uh, social distancing and the COVID safety precautions, these are masked shrikes. All the birds in this workshop are also going to be masked species. Um, but if you can get a copy of this, um, if you can print this out, and if you go into the chat, you'll be able to figure out how to do that. Um, you're going to really be happy you have this out and a physical copy of it during this worksheet. It's not going to be just a reference. It's going to be a work along with us worksheet and we're going to be adding all sorts of stuff to it. And so if you've got this, if that doesn't work for you, just follow along with us. And later on, you can print one of these out and you can follow along with those same exercises, but you might enjoy doing it live because we are. Today, what I want to do is to teach you how to look at a bird and simplify all that crazy detail to like, what are the essential things that I need to notice to make my bird look like a real bird and to make my bird look like a living bird. Um, we're gonna show you half of those techniques today. The part which we're not gonna be dealing with in this workshop, which we'll be doing in this subsequent workshop, which ties into the same idea, is how to draw the bird when it's not just doing this, but how to the bird, draw the bird when it's up at all sorts of different interesting angles. So we'll be turning heads around, we'll be turning bodies around. Today's workshop, we're going to be keeping the birds in a fairly static sideways position. And the reason that we're doing that is because there's so much other stuff which we're going to be thinking about that also turning those birds um, in three-dimensional space is going to be overwhelming for today. But you master today's topics, you'll be ready for our, our next workshop. You ready? All right. Let's start off with a little bit of a demonstration. I am going to uh, jump over to a document camera, and what I'm going to be doing is showing you um, kind of how I make a few of my basic starter lines. And this part will be going kind of quickly. Um, and the, uh, uh, could, could, actually I should specify that I'm drawing quickly. 
After this drawing demonstration, I'm going to kind of break that apart step by step a little bit more slowly with slides. And so you'll see kind of how we how we um, go about doing that. So let's jump to the document camera. All right. Um, I'm first just going to demonstrate um, first without talking kind of when I see a bird, how I block in that bird's basic shape. So a bird pops up for me. My initial sketch might look something like this. So what you saw there was a lot of lines popping down fairly quickly. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to get myself, I'm trying to get myself to notice and focus on the critical parts of, of, of that process, of, of the critical parts of the bird that I need to sort of get the, the oomph of its body. Um, I'm going to now just go over this a little bit more slowly with a slightly different posture. And then with a series of slides, we're going to break apart what I'm, what I'm doing. You're going to see me starting off with just sort of the angle on the back of the bird. In this first demonstration, that was one with a head up where there's kind of a, a broken angle there. Sometimes you'll see it's consistent straight angle all the way across the back of the bird. All right. Um, and here we go. Then I am um, blocking in the bird's head and a little line for where its beak goes. And looking at the negative space right in the front where the throat and the chest are. So looking at this zone out here, blocking that in. From there, I'm putting in a line where the tail goes in and a line along the leading edge of this bird's wing. So the leading edge is the front edge of the bird's wing. I'm looking at negative spaces on the back end of the body where the tail meets the body. Often there's an interesting angle right in that area there. And then I'm imagining the weight of the bird coming down mostly in this area. And what I'm doing then is making sure that if the bulk of this weight is coming down here, that my bird's legs are either going to be right on top of that spot or straddling that spot. So I could have one foot up here and one foot down here. And that's going to be my, my, my basic bird shape. I know that that went quickly. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to slow this down and we're going to look at a, um, I'm hearing for, for some, uh, some, for some people that the, uh, the quality on this, um, camera here is not very good. Um, let's jump over to a screen, um, uh, where I've, I've scanned images and we'll see if we can get up to a higher level of resolution for you. Ready? Here we go. A crisp picture at last. Um, so let's take a look at how I would uh, go about looking at a bird and breaking it down. When the bird pops up in front of you, there is all of this detail. There is, um, and you're wondering, like, how do I even, how do I even start on this? How do I get going with my basic shape, my basic picture? 
I find rather than focusing on the details of the bird, how feathers are overlapping, details of the foot, whatever it is, I look at big picture things. And the first thing I do is I look at the bird's general posture. So on this bird, notice that if I look along its back, there's sort of a flat line all the way across this bird's back. So that is my first line, the sort of line of the back of the bird here. I will block that in. And after that, you'll see me blocking in, you know, the mass of the head. And then looking at this negative space here, when I say negative space, I mean looking at the shape of the green air behind here, rather than the bird itself. When you look at the shape of the green air, it's easier to notice this edge. You're not distracted by the detail of the bird. Do the same thing up here. So look at the negative space to get this line of the back. Look at the negative space to get the line of the throat here. Um, then I'll be blocking in the mass of the body and you'll see me doing a few other pieces. So on a bird, let's take a look at drawing a mask strike here. There's a little mask strike. I'm gonna be drawing one pointing the opposite direction and at a steeper angle. On this little bird down in the inset picture, you'd be looking at what is the angle right along its back there. So you'd be coming down, slight change of angle here at the nape and making a line back like that. On this bird at a, that I'm gonna be drawing, that's the same one that is in your handout if you've got one of those, um, I'm getting, here's a general slope to the back of the bird. From here, I block in the mass of the head. So if you saw me sketching earlier, you notice it wasn't with one slow, smooth, careful line. I made multiple circles kind of wrapping around, you know, swoosh, 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 just sort of blocking that head in here. If you make this line as one careful, hard line, it's, it ends up being a little bit more difficult for your brain to, to wrap in these basic shapes. So keep them light at the start. I often make my initial lines with a very pale pencil. Um, though if you can see on the little side screen, I've got a, a, a Prismacolor non-photo blue pencil uh, right here. It's a Prismacolor erasable or coal erase non-photo blue pencil. That's what I usually do for blocking in my basic, my basic shapes. And um, then I want that head mass to attach onto a body. So I look, oh, sorry, I put in an eye beak line. Um, so if my bird beak is, head is looking up, right? Whoop, I get a line going up. Notice that this in the little inset picture here, see how there's a, you could draw a line underneath the eye and it goes straight out the beak. Those are in a really nice line. So whatever way the bird is looking, you get a lot of information just by putting in that one little line. So put in that little eye beak line, whoop, and then I'm going to tuck that head into the body. So I'm looking at what is the shape of the throat and the upper chest here. That is this really important negative shape. So I started with just the shape of the back, whether it's a straight line or a bent line. I'm putting in the mass of the head and the eye beak line. And then look at the little inset drawing, the little inset photo here. Notice there's this straight slope here connecting the throat down to the chest. For this, I'd just be making a straight line. In this bird, there's a little, sometimes you'll see a little change in angle where the throat meets the body. You don't really see that here in this inset photograph, but that's just, it's a good place to look for negative shapes. Again, the shape of the air behind the bird. From there, I'm gonna look at the size of the mass of the body of the bird. And this is where we start to really think about the proportions. How big is the head relative to the body? Different species of birds, on some you're gonna find big head, little body, say a morning dove. On other birds, you're going to, um, sorry, big head, little body, that would be a chickadee. Small head, big body, that's a morning dove and your little sparrows are somewhere in between. Your shrike is somewhere in between there. So as I'm putting in this oval, tucking it up into this little line that I made, right, that's where I'm really checking my proportions. 
from here, I put in my wings and my tail. So just a line along the top edge of the tail and the front or leading edge of the wing. Take a look at the little inset drawing. See if you can see my cursor. You see this lower edge of the wing right here? That's the leading edge of the wing. The back is the trailing edge. So the front is the leading edge of the wing. And this leading edge of the wing, this one's got it tucked straight up on its back, lining up with the tail. That wing could also be pointing out above the tail. That leading edge of the wing could be drooped down below the tail. So you get a lot of information about how the bird is posturing itself and holding its body by looking at that leading edge of the wing. On this drawing here, my leading edge of the wing is going to be above the tail. Now, a couple of very useful ne other negative shapes. Here, I'm putting in the angle of the forehead and the angle underneath the, the, where the tail meets the body. <clears throat> See down here, this area here, these little white clump of feathers here, it's called the undertail coverts. More on those later. But where the undertail coverts come in, there's often a very either, in this case we have a sort of a smooth tapering into the body. Sometimes right in here where these belly feathers meet the tail coverts, you'll get a sharp angle. Click right in there. So that's a great place to look for angles. We already looked for angles here where the head meets the body. Now we're looking for angles where the tail meets the body. For making your bird look alive, a stance that is believable is really, really important. Right? If, I, if I draw in legs and they're too far back, my bird will feel like it's going to flip forward. Too far forward, it's going to feel like it's going to flip back. I want my bird to be balanced. So you can essentially ignore the tail because it's very lightweight. Look at the mass of the head and the body here. That's where most of the weight is. And decide on this, where along here, if you were, if I were to try to balance this on the tip of my black cursor, if I put it here, it would tip backwards, right? Here, it would tip forward. Somewhere in here is going to be my balance point, right? And you've got a little bit of wiggle room on this because feathers can fluff up and be a little bit deceiving about sort of how big a part of the body is. But so somewhere in here is going to be the mass of your body. And that means that if you project a line down from the bird from there, if this bird is standing on one foot, that foot needs to connect to the branch right along that balance line. If the bird is, has two feet down, that you want to straddle that balance line, or one foot can be directly on top of it. You want a foot directly on top of it or straddling that. So if I'm putting in my bird's legs, I want to look at where's my balance point, and I want to make sure that my feet are either going on either side of that or right down to that line. That makes a huge difference on having your bird feel balanced or not. So I'm going to imagine that in here. And then what I often do is I look at the negative shape between the legs. What is the shape of the air? For instance, in this bird here, there's this little triangle. That's the negative shape between the legs. I look at what that is, and I use those to put in my legs. Here, if I thought the weight was coming down somewhere here, I'm making sure my legs are on either side of that point. So this shape here, the shape between the legs, I'm finding more and more is a very useful shape for getting dynamic poses on my birds. So I'm always looking for that these days. That, in my early, early sketching, that was something that really wasn't on my radar. Now for getting good leg positions, this is just, it's just cool. Right. So that is kind of in a more sort of, slowed down formal presentation. That is my approach to drawing this bird. So I am going to jump back to this screen again. And let's just take a look again at what process looks like. Now you've kind of, that you've seen it slow-mo. 
Um, let's see if we can make sense out of that in faster motion. So first, there's the negative shape along the back of the bird. There's the mass of the head. Let's make this one a big headed bird. Maybe let's sort of start thinking chickadee. All right, which way is it looking? Let's make it look, let's make it looking up a little bit. Then what is the shape of the negative, the, the, the air um, on right on its throat? The head comes down and hits the belly. What is that negative shape, that little throat shape? and then the mass of the body. Put in a tail. Which way is the tail gonna be coming in? It could be here, it could be here. Hey, let's make this a wren. Let's do that. Let's, let's, let's stick the tail kind of up at an angle. Wrens have big heads, little birds, big heads. Big birds, little heads, all right? And its wing is gonna be drooped down here. Now that, remember I mentioned that, that the negative shape of the undertail covert. So those are gonna kind of come down and they're gonna hit these fluffy feathers down here. And then my bird's weight wants to come down somewhere in here. And my legs are gonna be on either side of that. So I'm gonna have one foot going here, one foot going here. So what I've got is, here is my little wren shape. Let's make this Give it a little wren beak. Fluffy feathers out here. It's gonna have, we'll look at how to draw ourselves a wing later on. Bird will have a little wing in there. Tail sticking up at a jaunty angle. And it's gonna have one foot down here, another foot coming forward to the branch that it's on. So that is, that's my, you notice that, that this, just be notice that this is not me drawing like this. I wasn't drawing, here's a careful angle along the back going slow, right? It is, um, it, these are fast sketchy lines that block things in. So in this part of the drawing, you are, you're going, you're going more quickly. The idea, again, with the balance on the bird is just completely ignore the legs here, all right? If, if imagine you had a bird model and you were to balance that at some point, right? I'm showing it in side view, but imagine that this is up, this is down here, right? You've got that balanced in, in side view. Where that balance point, point is on the bird, that is the point where you want to make sure the bird's legs are on either side of that balance line. If the balance line is here and you put the legs attaching to the branch back here, it's going to feel like the bird is going to flop forward. If you put the um, legs attaching to a branch up here, it's going to feel really back weighted like that. So that's why you want to sort of, you want to think of like all right where is where's the center of the, the the mass of the weight of this bird draw a line down from that right draw a line down from wherever that point is so on this wren i would imagine that point is being somewhere somewhere about in here and you actually have a little bit of wiggle room with this and the reason why you have wiggle room with it is that these feathers can either fluff up or sleek down. And um, so not all of this is, is, is bird body weight. Maybe it just had also a big lunch. Maybe part of the body core here is heavier. And, but when the bird evacuates, it just got lighter in the core here. So that balance point can actually shift Subtly, so you've got a little bit of wiggle room. You make that balance point somewhere in this area, you're in good shape. 
So a broad stance here guarantees you that it gets a little bit more difficult when you're drawing a bird that is balancing on one foot. Jack, we're getting a lot of comments about focus. Is there a way that you can manually set your document cam to manual focus? Oh, um, there probably is. Um, <clears throat> so when I put my hand in, is it just focusing on the back of my hand? Is yeah, that the... it, it's kind of hunting a lot. Oh, sorry about that. Um, um, there probably is. Uh, somebody says, seems like the lens is dirty. Just in case we're going to wash that lens, see if we can improve that. We'll hope and that that... If you have a lamp handy, it might just help the, the focus if there is a little more lighting. I'm not sure. Okay, we'll do that too. Thank you everybody for your suggestions. We hope that this will refocus it one more time. We hope that that will help some. All right. Let's start now looking at um, the parts of the bird. Um, I'm going to jump back to that, that screen sharing thing. And what I'm going to suggest you do is to block out a little um, block out a little bird in this pose on your page, and what this is, what we're going to be doing is, if you have the worksheet, um, that actually is your target. You'll sort of know where we're going. We're going to be constructing and drawing that bird, and looking at the parts of the feathers as we we put them in, um, and. So if you have this as a reference, you'll kind of have a, have a target of, you know, you'll know kind of what we're going to be moving towards. Um, let's jump back here. So we've, we've blocked in this basic bird. What I do once I have a bird, uh, the core bird drawn in like this, I now start to draw on top of that with either a dark graphite pencil or with a pen. And what's neat, if you ha do these initial lines with a light blue pencil, you do them really lightly, people who look at that are not going to be distracted by your, uh, those, those non-photo blue pencil lines that are underneath there. Their eyes are going to go straight to the big picture lines that you're doing. All right, so let's give this a try now. Um, this, oh, actually, oh, here's, this will be even more fun. That's right, I remember I put in a, a few other masked birds here. Just to practice this, uh, we'll come back to kind of working more on this guy in a little bit, but just to practice this, let's just try some speed drawing sketches to kind of get the oomph of these birds. I'm gonna put up a few masked birds, and what I'd like you to do is just try to speed draw these as you see them. So the bird is going to be up there for about 30 to 45 seconds. And what you want to do is just try to make these preliminary lines as quickly and fluidly as you can. All right? Don't worry about detail. We're just going for the basic oomph of these things. And don't worry, all of these birds have been masked for your protection. Bird number one. The masked water tyrant. Let's give it a try.
We just want fast, big picture ideas. Turns out a lot of the masked birds also just have cool names. I think being a water tyrant uh, is a, that's a, that's, that's like getting to be Mr. Black. That's, that's really cool. Let's try the masked flower piercer. All right, look at this. Just start off just noticing this, the, how different the angle of that back is. The angle of that back, it's up at a steeper angle, right? Than that masked water tyrant. When you go and draw that angle underneath its chest, there's a really big step down there. Masked flower piercer. We have some comments regarding the whole balancing and they, they seem to say that the birds are, or they look like they're gonna fall back in these images. Ah, um, there's much less weight on the tail than you think there should be. The tail is a very, very, very lightweight structure. So for this one, all it has to do is have to have the center of gravity be, be between here and here. So anywhere in there, its center of gravity is coming down. And with that stance, it'll hold that. I'd like to introduce you to the masked crimson tanager. Give that a try. So those, notice this one, there's a little change in angle at the head, right? So I'm going to start with that little change in angle at the head. All the, the pictures that you're seeing today are all uh, taken from a website called birdpixel.com, um, the website of Vivek Kanzori. I really want to send a shout out to him, master bird photographer, um, who has given his blessing to artists and naturalists who want to use his material as reference material. I really recommend people go to that website to be able to, to, to get really good, uh, useful photographs that help you kind of understand how birds are put together. The masked yellow throat. Oh, look at that line along the back. Masked yellow throat. This is a great exercise, by the way. The more you just sort of practice making these quick bird shapes, the more that you are going to, to find when a bird pops up in front of you in the field, you can start to get 
it transferred to paper. Last one, the mask to tira. Mask to tira, nice little step where the neck comes down and hits that back. Pops that head up at an interesting angle, doesn't it? The more you practice these introductory basic sketches on birds, the faster you'll be able to really see and understand forms that you encounter in the field. Now, let's jump over and return to our friend, the masked shrike. Um, I'm going to start to draw over those light uh, blue lines with, with, with details. Um, for, for this, I want to just point out a couple of uh, little subtleties that are going to help your bird um, beaks and, and details work for you. Let's take a look at the beak itself. So on the beak, I'm going to draw a large version here in case our uh, screens are coming in, still coming in blurry. Um, on the, the, the bird's beak, you want to think of it as We've got an upper and lower mandible. And on the upper mandible, there's a little nostril. And there are feathers that pooch in towards that nostril and then sweep back. So often you get this little curve in here towards the nostril. On the lower mandible, there is no nostril. The feathers are going to, from the corner of the mouth, they often come in further forward than, they, um, than, you, than you see on the upper. So I'm going to have a little kind of sweep in here. And if I from this point here, if I draw the bird's head coming back from there, you get the sense of you're looking at a side view of the bird's head. But I can get a really fun sense of, 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 of action and movement in the bird by just taking the front uh, edge instead of Coming back from here on my bird, I'm going to bring that just around here a little bit. So just that, putting the ed far edge of the bird wrapping around the far side of that bill does a lot to kind of turn that head towards you just a little bit. And underneath the throat here, there are chin feathers that come up underneath, and those also tuck back and in. So we're kind of wrapping into the bell on top and bottom here.
for where the tail connects to the body. I'm going to draw this just straight in a side view. There are upper tail coverts that wrap in and around, and there are undertail coverts that usually stick out further on the bird. So I want to think of my upper tail coverts and my undertail coverts wrapping into the, the, the tail on the back side of the bird. And we don't have time in this workshop to do a deep dive into bird feet. I know that that is something that a lot of people, it gives people a lot of trouble. In this workshop, we're doing things other than, than that. For now, just notice that when you're looking at a bird foot from behind, there are four toes and you are going to see one of those toes sticking towards you and they have a little bump at the base of it with a claw. And the other part of the foot is going to be wrapped around a branch. So you're going to have toes hooking around the far side and coming back towards you. One toe back, three toes forward. And um, you, sometimes those are kind of loosely held or sometimes they wrap up tightly on the branch. My big suggestion for drawing feet is don't get really wrapped around the axle about adding in a ton of detail on the feet. For now, keep them rather loosely drawn. And as you start to kind of get a better understanding of bird structure, we'll dial in on, you can dial in on those more and be able to get more accurate bird feet. But for now, um, don't let it be something like, oh, I can't handle the feet. I'm not going to, I, 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 I want to avoid drawing birds. Just keep them rather loosely drawn. Keep that back toe straight so that it doesn't bend or wrap around the branch and you'll be in good shape. So what I will start to do when I am and, and drawing a bird is I will block in the light parts. I then begin to draw over that with my, my pencil. You can see the, the beak here tucking into the face, the far side of the face wrapping around here, around the other side. The eye and the beak are on the same line. There often is a little change in the angle where the head meets the body. The overall form of the bird is fairly sleek because it has to slip through the air. Now, I'm going to start to draw in the wing. So I'm going to lightly block in a circle in its shoulder area. This is going to be where, what are, where all the covert feathers, little feathers at the top of the wing are going to be hiding. I'm going to block this wing out in three portions. So here are the covert feathers, a little oval at the top of the wing. The secondary feathers are a block of feathers down below that. And the primary feathers stick out underneath those two. So there's a big block of covert feathers that goes all the way across towards the back part of the wing. There's a little put in a little oval of where my secondary feathers go and then in the front part of the wing that's where my primaries are going to stick out as a long tooth sticking out below those. And then what I begin to do is I just start to work my way down the wing adding units of feathers. 
So up at the top in these coverts, there are some tiny little feathers at the top that are so small that you often don't see individual feathers. But as when you start to see feathers, they begin to overlap from the front. So I start to draw these ones, but I begin from the front and I work my way towards the back. See how if you start here, you then keep adding more in. <laughs> Those feathers are on top of the next row. Those are the little ones are called the lesser coverts. Now I'm going to put in the median coverts. And these, um, I'm sorry, the lesser coverts are up here. And these were the median coverts here. <clears throat> Scratch everything that I was saying before about <laughs> those being lesser. Uh, those are median coverts. The lesser coverts are, I mean, the, the, the greater coverts are the largest ones, and they're going to come all the way down to this bottom line here and swing along that. And so with them, I started my median coverts from the front corner here, front to back. I'm going to draw my lesser, my, <clears throat> my greater coverts, starting from the back and moving towards the front. So I start, this is the first one that I draw in. I draw on this one. You notice how these are coming right along that blue pencil line. Draw that one, then that one, then that one, and then I can keep tucking them underneath. The last one is a little bit more of a dagger shaped thing that drops down below them. And you're going to find that that's a different feather called the allula. So I'm going to have this line of greater covert feathers starting here, boop, 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 boop all the way to the last one, which I'm going to put in as a slightly drooping dagger shaped one. <clears throat> that's a little feather that's attached to the bird's thumb. Now I'm going to get into these feathers here, the feathers of the, um, the feathers of the secondaries. And the first ones that I do on those are the ones towards the back. Remember, with their overlapping front to back, you start on this end. If they're overlapping back to front, you start on this end. These are going to overlap back to front. So what I do is I first start with their three big feathers called tertials. And I draw the smallest one first, and then tuck this one in underneath that, and then tuck this one underneath that. And they are as big as the whole row of secondaries. So this last one is really pretty long. And the direction that these are going is pointing right up towards the shoulder here. So little bear, mama bear, and papa bear, three feathers getting progressively larger along the back. This whole zone here is where the rest of the secondary feathers will be. And so I start to draw those from back to front. And when you're drawing the edges of these, you don't have to draw in the whole edge. You see how it looks kind of cool if you kind of don't? You leave some gaps. Um, it starts to feel like prison bars if you draw them all in. And so just you can suggest them. So you start to draw those in. Suggestion is often better than really noodling it in. And those, the last one, they're, they're, see all the edges of those, they're parallel to each other. And they don't have to be parallel to these covert feathers. Sometimes these covert feathers are coming down more while these ones are coming up more. Slight different angle there. Sometimes you'll see them lining up. Now we're going to put in the primary feathers. And we're going to start by drawing the back edge of the primary feathers. There's a whole series of feathers here kind of overlapping each other. And Keith Hansen, bird artist from Bolinas, taught me to draw them this way. What Keith does is he first draws in the back edges of them. He's just going to draw in those back edges. If you get a really good look at them, you'll find that they're often not evenly spaced. So after you draw in the back edge, then you just start with this first one and you draw a line up. 
your target is up in here. So you're gonna draw a line from there and imagine that you're aiming it right up in here, right? That's gonna go there, second one, the next one. And eventually they pop out from underneath the mass of the, um, the mass of those secondaries. And they start to go up this way. You don't have to draw lines all the way up. As a matter of fact, it often looks better if you don't. And it's easier, right? Um, if you draw them all the way up here, you have to make these ones go parallel all this distance, drawing thin lines close together. Some of them will bump into each other and it kind of makes a mess. You can handle it in here a little bit and then just suggest it. I'm going to show the, the end of that and the start of it over here. That is often a lot easier to draw than drawing those lines all the way up. Up in here, there's one more little patch of feathers. This is what is called the uh, primary coverts. These are secondary coverts here. These are coverts over the primaries. They're down below the dagger of the allula. One little extra bump of feathers in there. So here we've gone into this wing structure in crazy detail. I'll show you in a moment a little bit about sort of simplifying that. But for our purposes today, really understanding that structure is going to be very helpful. We're now going to do the same thing on the body because we've got all this detail in here and then it's just blank slate up in here. What I want to do is to get some landmarks and structure up in these parts of the birds, not just things that are the edges of two colors, but important bumps and ripples on the face and the surface of the bird to carve my bird. So what I'm going to do is to start by putting some rings around the eyes. So one tight little ring around the eyes and then a suggestion of I'm sleepy, right? A suggestion of these other rings going around the eyes, but not really noodled out in detail. The first one, you can kind of punch it in, but then you're gonna suggest it on these outer ones. Now, we're going to connect that eye to the beak. So, there's a little triangle of feathers in here called the lores. And this zone of feathers is often differently colored or in shadow, and it can make a bird kind of look angry. Um, so if you want to get that angry bird's look, if your bird is just looking a little bit too kind of golly, everybody, let's have a party. You want it to have, look a little bit more serious. You probably have left out the lores. So um, the lores really do a lot in kind of they connect this with this. They may be differently colored or they may be the same color or value. But I used to leave these out in my drawings and a lot of my birds just look a little bit too kind of Stepford Wives blank stare. But the minute you put in the, this little mark here, um, the birds just start to kind of, they look more alert and present. So I really, I'm a big lores booster. Now, there's a big patch of feathers that comes out, it's going to cover the bird's ear. So it goes out from the middle of the eye, back, curves down around the side of the head, and tucks into this sort of sleepy zone under the eyes. This are called the auricular feathers, or the ear patch of the bird. This patch of feathers has distinctly different texture than the rest of the feathers on the bird's head very often shows up prominently. Even if the bird's head is all one color, these little marks will show up. This one especially, because they're a different texture, they're stiffer feathers that don't attenuate sound as much. Really cool adaptation, so less fluff in the feathers over the ear. You see this little hook on the lower part of the bill? This little edge here goes up to the corner of the mouth. From the bottom of the bill here, there's another little suture line that comes down here. You'll see that clearly on a lot of birds called the malar zone. So this is the malar zone underneath the auricular feathers. 
and the bottom edge of it connects up right there. On the back of the head of the bird, there are head feathers that come down. Oops, actually first, I'm sorry, I have this one other little cool feather here. Check this out. <clears throat> I put in right up here, right where the top of the beak comes in. If you put in a little bit of a suture there, there's no official name for this that I've found. But sometimes you'll see a little depression right there in the bird that just helps you say, see on a three quarter view head, this is the middle of the head coming up here. See how without it, it's a little bit more ambiguous where the middle of the head is here. The minute you put that in, you're like, oh, you're coming up and then you're dropping down the other side. That's this side, that's that side. You're kind of the planes of your head become a little bit more useful. I love putting in that little, that little bit there on a three quarter view head here. The back edge of the head where it meets the back is also really useful. These fluffy feathers back here are called the bird's nape. And where those meet the back or the mantle feathers makes a very crisp line. As the bird moves its head around, something the head here will move independently of the feathers down here. And so you often see where those two meet a nice crisp little line. There can be a color difference at that point, but there doesn't have to be. Now we're gonna move down into this. See how we've, we've put all this structure into that, what was just the no man's land of the face. We're gonna do the same with the back here. And the most important pile of feathers in that zone is what are called the scapular feathers. They attach over the bird's shoulder blade and they cover up the top edge of the wing. The back edge of them can be indistinct. The bottom edge is very clear as it overlaps the wing. In this shrike over here, they're bright white. So bright white scapular feathers you see right in there. That is right there. So even if the bird's back is all one color, look for, don't, rather than just have this be all one big sheet, look for just a little bit of an indication of where there's a little ripple on the back where the scapulars are and you can give a bit of structure into that part of the bird. A bunch of the other parts of the bird here are looking pretty stiff. So what I will often do is fluff those up. So I can make little tick marks. And you notice how here you can like you you can drive a little bus into the head of the bird here. It's not a closed line. So in some places, just sort of having some open lines, let's air in here, around the back of the head here, around this part of the belly here, really good place for fluff. So great places for fluff are here, a little bit under the chin, a little bit here, where the back of the head angle curves around. Some places you want there to be really smooth lines. You don't want fluff lines all over the edges of your bird or you'll look like somebody just put them, you know, just got them out of the dryer and had them on the fluff cycle. Because these feathers will actually sleek down and smooth over each other. But in some places, like the back edges of these feathers, you'll see that scruffiness. You'll see a bit of the scruffiness here. You'll see a little bit of that scruffiness here. A little bit of scruffy and the smooth go so well together. If it's all one, no, it looks like you made this bird out of plasticine. If it's all fluffy, then the bird, um, yeah, again, just feels like it's been blow dried and, um, and, and, needs, and needs a little bit of, 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 of manicuring. So those are lines that I really look for to bring structure and form into parts of my bird. In this demonstration, we went into crazy detail in the wing because I wanted to put you through the work and the labor of drawing that hyper detailed wing. That was kind of mean of me. But the method behind it is, is that understanding these different groups of feathers allows you to abstract them. 
And if you start with an abstraction, you may not understand what you are abstracting. So when I'm drawing a bird, I often don't draw in all these feathers. Instead, what I will do is I will suggest their placement, and I can then add in a little bit more oomph and pizzazz if I'm adding color and value to it. But if you draw this all over the side of the bird, again, you very often get, it often feels too heavy or even scaly on the wing. It's just too much, just like this amount of structure just makes the bird feel stiff and rigid. This feels a little bit more loose and might be able to fly off. If I am uh, going to be painting a bird like this, Often at this point, what I will do is I will also add in the boundaries of the edges of dark and light patterns or color patterns on the bird that, um, so you see these little lines kind of coming in here and here on the head. Those are edges of the white parts. So I'm giving myself a few little boundaries of places that um, are not directly on top of these major structural lines that I've already got in there. So those little boundary of colors plus those structural lines gives me the framework to be able to handle a bird like this. So I'm going to escape from this for just a moment. We're going to jump back over to here because now what I wanted to do is you may wonder why we have this, this sheet. This sheet is our template for understanding the patterns on the bird as well as kind of showing how if you wanted to paint one of those birds, how you'd go about it. So if you've got colored pencil, you can follow along and do the same thing I'm about to do with colored pencil. If you are using watercolor, I'm gonna be using watercolor, then what you want to do is just make sure that you are not using too much water. I'm gonna be avoiding getting big puddles on here because I'm going to color code this diagram. All right, so I'm going to just start up here in the head. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take part of it, the crown, and I'm going to put some yellow over crown. This part of the bird's head is your crown. If I don't have too much water on my brush, I have a nice little layer there. You can, with a, the, my water brush here, I'm now just wiping paint off of it. And I'm going to take a different color here and I'm gonna put this little orangey color into the supra laurel part of my bird. This little part in here is called the supra laurels. And on some birds that's differently colored. Useful spot to be aware of. Now, I'm gonna get a little bit of red here, and I'm going to put that into the lores. Being careful not to obliterate that um, eye ring. Oh, look at this. <laughs> uh, an, an omission here. I'm going to um, I am going to put in, I'm going to write orbital. Orbital feathers, the ones that are going to go around the little orbit there, uh, eye there, or the eye ring here. So I'm going to add that into my little worksheet. And I'm going to do those purple. I'm 
Nice little dark purple there. So section by section here, I'm going to drop over the, 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 the head of this bird. Um, let's go for a little bit of blue here. And I'm going to put that on the supercilium. The supercilium is the eyebrow zone. If you, if these colors, if these zones kind of get ingrained into you, you're going to find it is so much easier to be able to, 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 to draw what you see. I'm going to put in some very um, intense cyan here on the nape. I'm going to put a little bit of green into the cheeks, the auriculars or cheeks, that's my ear patch. And below that, where did I put Malar? Ah, I didn't. Okay. Um, I am going to write Malar over here. M A L A R. There we go. Here's my Malar. My light green. Going down the front of the bird, I'm going to drop back into some colors that I've already used. I'm going to put yellow on the chin. I'm going to put some orange on the throat. The sorts of patterns that birds will have in their upper chest uh, or what's called the breast are going to be different than um, very often this is an area where there are crisp patterns on your bird and they get more diffuse as you come down into the sides and the flanks of the bird. So let's come on down in the sides with some pink here And let's make the flanks red. Now the flanks is where you get these really shaggy feathers. Shaggy feathers will stick out down here. Um, that's why the back edge of that is often the the back edge of it will be. Um, I'll I'll draw in little marks to make them look fluffy. The belly, I'm going to go for some green again. You can use any color you want. Just try to avoid having similar colors uh, in, you know, right up next to each other so you can still tell what's going on. And the vent, I'm going to go for a dark green. The vent is the feathers right underneath its body there. So I'm going zone by zone across this and color coding my bird. I'm going to go for some bright orange on the mantle. Jack, just letting you know we have about 20 minutes left and
probably want to have the last five for questions. Excellent. I'm going to go for, let's see, scapulars. I'm going to go for a little bit of brownish here. By coloring in each of these zones intentionally, what we're doing is we're helping ourselves just sort of map these patterns into our brain. For the wings, the lesser coverts are the feathers that are just in here, the very top of this bar. The median coverts are down below that. And that's that one row of kind of reversed feathers. Now I get into the greater coverts and the allula. The greater coverts, I'm going to make purple here. And my allula sort of maroon. This lower part down here, I'm going to add another thing into my little key here. I should get to update this pretty soon. Primary coverts. I just added primary coverts in there. I see that I didn't have that, so I need to add the orbital, malar, and primary coverts. So I'll add a few more things into this. Let's take a look at. The tertials are these one, two, three feathers. They technically are part of the primaries. I mean, sorry, the secondary feathers. The first three secondary feathers. And then the rest of the secondary feathers tuck up underneath them. So when you're looking at the secondary feathers, I always think of you have one, two, three big feathers, then a whole pile that are the same length. And those secondary feathers come in there. It will help you immeasurably if you learn these zones. Um, both in your birding, allowing you to describe a bird, as well as um, being able to draw what you see. My primary coverts are this little patch in here. And my primary feathers are these big, long flight feathers that stick out there. Those are the ones that when you see a bird, a raptor flying, and the, it looks like the, the, the fingertips are, are, are they're, they're these sort of long fingers at the end. Those you're looking at primary feathers. If you had more of the mantle coming down this way, you would eventually, somewhere about in here, underneath this wing, it transition, transitions into the rump. And the, the rump, so I'm going to use this, um, often if there's, there's streaks or patterns up in here, the rump won't have that. But you want to think of sort of more of the back. So I'm using a similar color here just to kind of visually tie those things together. A yellow rumped warbler has yellow in that area. Below that, the feathers that go right up on top of the tail. 
are our upper tail coverts. The undertail coverts are below. These are often lighter colored. And finally, you sometimes see a little hint of another section of feathers that attaches to part of the leg called the femoral tract right up in here, often gets lost with uh, rump color and covered up by the lower flank feathers. So we'll make that green. Those are the femoral tract of feathers. And then there's a tail, but you already knew that. And I'm gonna make that magenta. So this, zoom back, is a very powerful exercise. Initially, kind of painting it out on, on a sheet that somebody else has prepared. But if you can then diagram this yourself, you can look in different bird books. They will often have slightly different names for these sections. I personally recommend to people to use the system developed by David Sibley. Um, I find his breakdown of bird parts to be the most useful. Um, and uh, so I would, I would use that. If you train yourself to pick out, oh, those, that's my ear patch. I've got scapulars. Look on a bird's breast. You know, when you see, oh, the upper part of the breast has tight streakings. As you go down onto the sides, it gets more faded and then disappears by the end of the flanks. You'll see, look at photographs of different birds and try to see reflections of these zones on those birds. And it will completely change the way you see a bird. What I'm going to do as the last little step here is I'm going to take this bird on the bottom of the page and I'm going to paint it like a real bird. And you're going to see how the understanding these zones goes into painting something like this. When I am painting a bird or drawing it with colored pencils, what I usually do is I start by just putting in shadows. I'll put in some shadows. If the light is coming from the back of the bird here, I'm gonna put in a little bit of shadow here underneath its wing, and maybe a little bit along its breast here. And I like to put my shadow in first. Um, if I put it in at the end, it often just blends and blurs other details that I really like that I put in on my bird. Um, on the belly of the bird, I'm intentionally leaving, we'll zoom in here a little bit, a little bit of light coming in on the belly here. There's a general strategy in watercolor to start with lighter values and work your way towards darker values. That's what I'm going to be doing. The next value I'm going to be going to, um, this bird is basically three colors. It's white, it's got a little bit of orange on it, and then it has black on it. So for that little bit of orange, I'm going to mix some of that up. What I will often do is just take the tip of my brush and fray it a little bit. So I've got a little frayed brush tip here. And I am going to come in here and with that frayed brush tip, add a little bit of color up into the chest of the bird here. 
I'm also going to add a little bit of that, a hint of it into this patch here behind the, between the back and the edge of the head, but not very much there. I want that to be rather subtle. Great. So because I put that shadow in first, I now have a shadow with local color. So I first put the shadow in, then local color. You'll notice I'm not dealing with big puddles of paint here. I can draw paint on one very quickly after I've done some other things. And that's because I'm not letting a big drip of paint sit on the tip of my brush and I'm not dropping that on my, on my page here. I'm now going to add the black into the body of this. There's a few key places where I have to leave things white. A big one is that scapular zone there. There's a patch in the base of the primaries between the primaries and the primary coverts. And also on the edges of some of these secondary feathers and some of these covert feathers. So you'll see when I get to those, what I'm gonna do to create little white edges. Um, I will first do that by showing them, getting them with my paintbrush. And then I'll show you what to do if you accidentally lose those and, and your, your, your paint goes all over the place. So it's a little bit of a, an easier approach. We'll kind of, we'll start with a more complicated one where I'm gonna leave some whites and then I'll show you if I hadn't done that, how to get those edges back at the end of the drawing. So this next stage is gonna go fairly quickly. What I'm gonna do is mix up some black here. You can use black paint from your palette or you can mix a black, often by combining a dark blue and a dark black. Um, I mean, a, and a dark brown. Sometimes by combining those, you get um, a more interesting color. Right? This bird in its lores has black. So I'm gonna come right there into those lores. And, but I'm leaving part of, I'm leaving the eye ring unpainted. I'm going out in the back here. My black is not a super, super dark black. It's a medium value black. So I can uh, punch in a little bit more um, value into it later on. I'm gonna come into the front edge of this along the forehead, along the head here. So I've just put some black on my head. While that's drying, I'm going to jump over and paint the lower mandible of the beak. And a little bit of a V into the upper mandible of the beak. I'll come back and mess with that beak a little bit more in a moment. I'm going to go into the back here, not on the scapulars. Paint in my black. And <clears throat> I'm gonna do the easy areas first. <laughs> There's a big tail. Actually, this bird has a little bit of white edging along the outer tail feathers here. So when I get to that, I'm gonna slow down a little bit. But out here, I can be like, woo. So I'm leaving a little bit of white along part of this tail in here. This bird's back has more black and into those feathers there. Um, on now I'm going to start to, to, to mess with this wing, and that's, um, that's, that, that's part that scares a lot of people. Um, 
I'm going to start here in the primaries by the tips of the primaries are often very dark black. Um, they have more melanin in them because the melanin is a strengthening pigment. And I'm going to just bring this smoothly up and move around, paint around this little stair step of the feathers right here in the top of the of those primaries. Here are my primary coverts, and they get to be all black. My allula gets to be all black. Now, this is where I have to be more precise, but I will show you later on in just a moment what I will, would do if I um, had gone oops with my brush. Um, this one, two, three of the tertials, they have white edges. So I'm using the point of my brush to draw in the dark and leave where the white would be. So I'm going to come along here and see I'm leaving that little white edge and I'm going to leave a little white edge here. Just another time check. We have about three minutes left. Oh, cool. <laughs> Let me see what I can do. All right. Um, in less than three minutes, I'm now going to draw a set of parallel lines coming up here because there are some white edges in these part of the secondaries that are going to blend into a black part up above. On the covert feathers up here, these covert feathers, they start overlapping in here and they're moving this way. So I'm going to draw the inside dark part of this one and then drop down and draw the inside dark part of the next one. And I'm going to leave some little strips of white there to be the edges of some of those feathers. Lastly, these feathers in here have little white edges. So I'm going to come across here, making a few little black spots, and then the rest are all covered up. All black again. Once I've got those basic values in, I can come back in with a little bit more really dark black and make some accents in this. So this is um, places where I can add in, because you have, you went with a medium shade of black, you can make this instead of a light gray, you can with your, a, a, a more of a black black, you can draw in your details more. I'm going to leave more, for instance, more of a highlight zone near the back out here where, where sunlight could be hitting the back of this little shrike. Brown gray mixture for the feet. And I'm going to paint that same thing over the beak, leaving those little zones of, of darker. I'm going to draw dark into the eye, leaving a tiny little highlight that could be some sunlight hitting that eye. Final, a little bit more detail in a few places I'm coming in, just suggesting that there's some little dark, other little shadows. A 
having that map of those other features is incredibly helpful to me to be able to, to, to do this. One last little detail here, and for that I need a dry bird, so I'm gonna hit it with this. My bird is dry, my watercolor is dry, I can take a white colored pencil. This is just a Prismacolor colored pencil. And I'm gonna just make a few light hatchy marks out here on the back, out here where the sun is hitting. Um, a few here adding some texture into those belly feathers. And that does a lot just to make this bird more of a more of a fluffy bird. Um, so a little bit of texture just in there. Put a highlight on the beak, and a couple little hints of some shiny white scales on the feet. I don't have to get her in and outline individual scales. A few little highlights on the feet, just say those are our, our, our shiny plastic-like feet. Um, what I don't have time to show you right now is that if I had um, put uh, accidentally on, you know, oops, uh, let's say here in these secondary feathers, if that had turned into something that was all a big dark blob. Um, I'm just gonna do it on that little area and I'll show you how I'd handle it. You let it dry. Mostly dry doesn't work, all the way dry is good. And then I'm gonna, with the edge of my white colored pencil, I can put those lines back in. And um, it, does a, it does a very good job. And if you want lines that are a little bit more crisp, I use a gel pen. A gel pen draws crisp little white lines. You see some of those are now getting more precise. Okay. Zoom in. And that, my friends, is an approach to thinking about drawing, seeing structure in, and then sculpting a bird. If your bird drawings, um, have behind them an understanding of the physiolo physiology, the anatomy of these things, then your birds will have an, uh, an additional sort of sense of, of life. The secret is to learn, study, and understand. And then when you go to draw something, don't show everything that you know. Suggest information rather than drawing in all the edges. Just a few little you know, edges of some of these feathers back here does a lot more than drawing in all of those little feather edges. I hope that this workshop was helpful for you in learning to understand, see, and be able to draw birds. Join us in uh, two weeks. We're gonna have part two of this. We're gonna be taking birds. We'll be rotating them around so that you can draw them from any angle. And finally, our third class, we're going to be drawing and rotating hawks in flight. I hope you can be there for both of those. It should be a lot of fun. Thank you so much for your support. And thank you for the support of the National Audubon Society. Thank you so much, Jack. And right before we sign off, you know, everyone can find these details in an email that I will send to everyone that is registered. That will include a link to the class website where all of these resources will be posted. And 
um, a couple of people were asking for their homework assignment before the next class, Jack. Oh, thank you so much. So your homework assignment, and yes, there is homework. What I would love for you to do is to just make some, uh, make at least two or three drawings of birds, but think of them as diagrams. And in these diagrams, drop in the, 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 the structures in a, just a very graphic way so that you're, you're, you're showing more than you can actually see. But you want to use those drawings to, to really force you to kind of like, what is that structure? What is that structure? What is that structure? What is that structure? Um, work your way through those, those, uh, those, those drawings with the intention of understanding the structure. And then after sort of three kind of studies, go back and draw one or two other birds. And on those one or two other birds, what you want to do is not show all that structure. So don't show everything that you know, but know everything that you show. And make deliberate decisions of, I'm going to suggest this and really show that. And see how that changes your approach to drawing birds. And as you're doing this homework assignment, please share it using the hashtag drawbirds2020. We have a really nice community of artists coming together, and we really like to see your work. Thank you so much. So Thank you, is that, that hashtag again, one more time? Drawbirds2020. Drawbirds2020. Thank you so much. It was really fun being with all of you. Bye, everyone. See you at the next class.